Welcome to Enough is Enough with host Echo Bodine. Echo says as far back as she can remember, the media and various religions portray the New Age community as evil, bad, satanic, charlatans, etc. And enough is enough. This show will present the New Age practices in the true light. People have been born with the gifts of prophecy and healing for thousands of years. So now please welcome your host, Echo Bodine. Hey everybody, here we are. It's Tuesday night, eight o'clock central. And this is Enough is Enough. And I am your host, Echo Bodine. It's so fun to get here every Tuesday night. I look forward to it all week. And tonight we're going to have a really, we're going to have two guests actually. So we're going to have a split screen like we do. And um, tonight, well, I don't want to tell you too much because, uh, hmm, okay, I'll just say the show is about creativity, but also messages from our loved ones on the other side. Yep, they're connected tonight, these two things. And um, I I want you all to see Ann Pryor's work and read Reese's book because they're both fantastic. But I also want you to think about the show tonight as something important for you. You know, when I was young, can you believe that I actually got an F? <clears throat> yes, that would be an F. <clears throat> My voice could hardly say that. Uh, in art class. Do you know how hard it is to get an F in art class? And my teacher said, I go, you know, do all the art teachers a favor and don't sign up for art again. It's just not something you have. And so for the longest time, I thought, okay, I'm not creative. I don't have anything to create. And honestly, I thought that for the longest time. And then when I sobered up, <clears throat> I'm just revealing all kinds of stuff tonight, aren't I? When I sobered up, my uh, sponsor told me that I needed to go to a craft store and get, he said, I don't care what you get, but you're really impatient and you need to learn how to be patient. And I remember thinking, what, 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 what is a craft store going to do for me? But he said, I'm serious, Echo, you need to learn a hobby. Oh my God. So off to the craft store I went and I'd never been there before. And it was absolutely overwhelming. There were so many things there that I didn't even know about. And I ended up getting a little candle kit, which was, it ended up to be a really fun little project. And from there, and people kept saying when I would show them my candles, they'd say, wow, you're really creative. And I thought, no, I'm not really creative. That's what my art teacher said. It was always a thing in my head about, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. And uh, for those of you who know me, you now, that, you now know that my middle name is Miss Creativity because I'm always doing something creative. And one of the things that I have found other than the fact that it did teach me patience was that I became, uh, it's like meditative. I realized when I was working on a project, when I was putting all of my energy into a creative project, it put me in a different space. I was very calm. I was very excited about the colors and the feel of everything. And, and now I think one of the reasons, I guess I don't think I know one of the reasons why I continue to find crafty things to do is that it puts me in a headspace that I need to be in every day. It's like I feel really connected to the universe. Boy, you know, if you are a creative person, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you are someone who believes that you aren't creative, then you won't know what I mean. But I want you to think tonight after tonight's show about doing something creative. Okay. 
all of you out there that are thinking, no way, Bodine, I'm not going to go to some goofy craft store and buy some little thing where I can make a loon or well, I can't remember what they're called. Um, no, 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 no. Just even to do something, just to, it's like you put all of your energy just into this thing that you are creating. And it really takes you to a different place mentally and emotionally. Okay. All right. So now my guests are probably here and um, let's see, I'm going to ask my producer if they're here yet. Christian, are the guests here yet, honey? They're probably coming right now. Uh, okay. Let me introduce you to, uh, let me tell you about Ann Pryor. Okay. Many, many, years ago i met with ann um, she is highly involved with linkedin and i met with her because i needed i needed help with my business i didn't know how to take it to the next level and she was recommended to me by a friend and i called her and we had just oh god such a good conversation she She's really easy to talk to, really mellow. And um, we parted ways after she gave me lots of really great suggestions. And now here we are, how many years later? Could be even 20 years later. And now she is known throughout the world as an artist. And I can't wait till you hear the story of how she became a world famous artist. Christian, are they here yet? There they are. Oh my God, you guys. Hi. Hi oh, we gotta oh, adjust God. ourselves a little. Yeah. Yes. Good yes. to see you, Echo. Thanks for inviting us. Of course, honey. Did you hear the introduction I just gave? Yeah, thank you very much. Yes. God, I love it. All right. So the lady with the apron, everybody, this is Ann Pryor. And, and the lady next to her, and Reese, I hope to God I say this correctly, is uh, Kazmersky. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Reese you, honey. Has... <laughs> okay. Um, and so what I want to do tonight, because it's such a fascinating story. And so what I'm hoping, or what I ask them, if Anne would show you a demonstration of how you work. Because if I said to you, Oh yeah, she paints pictures with a straw. Even people that I've told have said, excuse me, what did you just say? Yes, I know, you have to see it. So Anne is going to paint with a straw, with her own breath, well, obviously, and then Reese is gonna explain to you how this all happened. Because again, most of you out there in the world know Anne as, top dog over there at LinkedIn. And here she is, a world famous artist right in front of us. So I'm going to sit back and I'm going to listen to this fascinating story because it is totally cool. I mean, you guys are going to love this story. Okay, Reese, take it away. Well, I'm going to start. So Echo, thank you so much for inviting us. Um, friends, I've been taking Echo's classes for 20 years. I was too shy to introduce myself to her. Uh, before we met about LinkedIn. And because of her classes, uh, my intuition has been opened up. So I'm grateful. Risa and I have been corporate executives for 40 years. I'm in sales and marketing. I have my own LinkedIn business and career coaching. Risa's my partner in this. You were a sales and marketing executive for many years. And I'm going to paint, and Risa's going to tell you the story. I'm going to move my my camera down so you can see what I'm cool. doing. Okay, perfect. So the first thing I'm gonna just share with you a little bit is I was not an artist until six years, seven years ago. I've never taken an art class. So I'm going to take some paper. I usually use plastic or UPO paper. And then I have uh, essential oils. And this I meditated on and I chose this essential oil and I blessed the paper. There were two that I chose today. And then I use alcohol ink. And so I'm going to start in and Lisa will tell you the story. Okay. Okay. All right. 
So as Anne's painting, you're going to notice that it's going to take her maybe four or five minutes to complete this painting. There yeah. are 7,000 paintings around the world, Love of Two Soul paintings. Um, and they were inspired by our friend and colleague who passed away suddenly from stage four cancer um, uh, quite a few years ago now. And what happened is um as soon as she, as she was going through the death process and was in hospice Anne and i would go see her each day and, and Anne even said to her you know when you're on the other side come back and tell us what it's like <laughs> and um so what happened is our friend died and uh right away when i was doing her eulogy that's the first time i saw her and i'm not a psychic i'm not a medium but I saw her sitting in the audience as I was doing her eulogy. And for a year, and so this is part one of the story, for a year, she would come to me in lucid dreams. And you know, if you've had those kinds of lucid dreams, those are the ones that you have and you'll never forget what you dreamt about. Um, the details are so vivid about someone who has passed. So in the course of a year, some of you a couple of weeks ago might have heard Wes Hamilton, uh, and he's a, a master numerologist, and I worked with him the first year after our friend died. And he brought me into deep meditation and journaling to capture all of what I was seeing and hearing from our friend who passed. So fast forward a year, and now we're into part two of this story. I've got four journals filled with um, messages from our friend who passed. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to call a medium because... Maybe I just made this all up. We tend to think we're making up things that come from our intuition. Right. And so I called the medium and she said, there's a friend here to visit you. She has big hair. And um, she talked about our friend for an hour. And um, I, I was able to ask them, you know, should I take these journals and write the story of what happened and so on. And the message is loud and clear. Write the story. Say everything our friend would um, say because we knew her so well. So I called Anne and said, Anne, you've got to go talk to this medium. She's amazing. And our friend came through. So Anne said, I'm going to call that medium, see if I can connect with an aunt that passed. And when she got a hold of the medium, the medium said, This never happens, but there's someone here to talk to you, Anne, who was just here to talk to somebody else a few weeks ago. <laughs> and so, that is when Anne got the messages about the paintings you're watching her do right now. So her messages were that she was to begin painting in peacock colors with her breath on large sheets of plastic, and she was to bless the paintings and that the paintings would go all over the world. So of course, Anne did nothing for three months because she was not an artist. If you're not an artist, what are you going to do with that information? Right. Yes. Uh, finally, yeah. So three months later, one day I was at her, her house and she said, look what's on my cell phone. It says on March 31st, new life opportunity. And I didn't put that on my cell phone. I'm going to erase it. And then the next morning she called and said, you won't believe it, but the message is on there again. New life opportunities. And... Wow. I know. And then Anne, of course, she has the busiest schedule, but her clients all started canceling and uh, for March 30th. And so oh, that oh, was the day she began Lovitude Soul Painting. And you can see she's using a crystal straw now, but initially the first painting she did, she tried blowing the ink across the page and almost passed out. So there's a, a <laughs> Whoa. There's a process going on here. And so your friend who passed then continued, I continued journaling with her and she would give me messages to give to Anne. So she would say, tell Anne, infuse the gold, it's in the signature. And then she said, tell Anne, the souls line up to be painted. Whoa. So that her breath is spiritual presence. And when she starts talking about this picture for you in, in a bit, she'll explain what messages came earlier in the evening about who is involved in this picture right now. But frequently when she's painting, there will be somebody in the audience witnessing it who will have a, 
instant connection with somebody that they have passed who's coming through in the painting. Wow. Wow. Well, so I, noticed, I noticed a couple, about a month ago when she was at the center, um, Anne has a store at the center in Richfield, and I noticed uh, that she was painting, God, this gorgeous picture, and it was all the colors of the different rooms in the center, which I, you know, I, I, it just took my breath away. It was so gorgeous. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, look at this. I mean, I, and I even asked, Anne, do you realize that you just painted the center, the center colors? Cause the center is very bright and cheerful. And, um, she, you know, it was interesting to watch her because she looked at me almost like she was in a trance, like, Mm -hmm. Anne, are you there? Anne, Anne, are you there? And uh, it was fascinating. It, it's almost like she was just on a whole nother level of, uh, what do I want to say? Um, consciousness. And mm -hmm. she was listening. She was being guided. And that's what I thought was so cool. Other than the fact that it was your deceased friend that brought mm -hmm. her and you, Reese, these ideas i mean mm -hmm. the whole thing is just amazing to me and here yeah. is here's both of you who are like you said you're both executives in the business world and now i mean talk about your past completely changing mm -hmm. wow it just blows my mind mm -hmm. so honey what did you get while you were and wait a minute let me let me back up before i ask you that when when Risa was saying that you get, oh uh, gosh, how did you say it, honey? Um, it's like you're getting inspired. How, how does the inspiration come through you? Do you hear something? Do you see a picture? Do you just automatically pick up the color and go? Um, can you explain to us, Anne, what you're going through right now, honey? Um, you're right, Echo. It's like automatic writing, right? So I don't think about it. I just um, feel the energy, sorry about this, I feel the energy um, in an audience. And boy, do I feel a lot of energy today, I'll tell you that. Um, so I, I have no concept what I'm going to do before I sit down and do it, because I'm not an artist. Um, so I just pick and i'm guided to just pick whatever um plops down on the paper okay. and so okay. uh today i just got an amazing burst but grounded in communication and love and the pink on the outside is just complete love holding the container of new beginning so this group that's here today is hungry for a communication and a new beginning and they're just grounded in love so um you've seen me paint many times echo yeah. and um, yeah. something different comes out of course every time based on the energy that i'm receiving from the other side now today when i was meditating i heard them say we're all lined up and i said to them well who's going to come through and how do i know who to talk to and they yeah. said we're yeah. going to give you a montage tonight it's going to be more of a collage we're all coming through and wow. Wow. Be something for everyone on this okay. call okay. and boy is there yeah yeah <laughs> yes. yeah i think this is one of the busiest paintings i've seen you do yeah I mean, yeah it, and uh for all of you that are watching her, you can see some other paintings behind her, which are just, I mean, oh my gosh, I have got, she, ha, <laughs> I have to just calm down. I get so excited. Um, I mean, oh God, you have to tell her, uh, Risa, can you tell people about all the different products she has right now? Oh my gosh. I mean, oh, we were talking about that earlier. So the very first, our very favorite yes. one is the Kleenex box, of course, because oh. when Anne started painting, she used yes. to say, she used to say, someday Lovitude is going to be on Kleenex boxes because 
because it's love attitude is about love and gratitude Healing. inspired by spirit you, you know, know and sure oh. enough and Anne is a good manifester. Yeah. And Ethel, you yes. have all of my pillows in your center and um, quilted materials, which you've developed quilts. So um, this particular image is called Healing Breath, and um, it's actually hanging in Mayo Clinic. It's the one behind me. Perhaps yes. you can see yes. that. So, yes. Um, yes. yeah. Yes. But um, so clear point echo we listen right we listen to our intuition and at first we dismissed it right and then we allowed the messages to come through and we asked for more messages yeah well i, yeah. I think you had uh, been talking earlier echo about creativity and and one of the really important pieces that we've learned uh, in this process is just let it go let the creativity flow so you notice when Anne's painting she uh if she all of a sudden were to drop a big blob on this painting yeah that yeah. belongs there so she okay. will not fix it or throw it away everything okay. has its okay. way okay all right wow and here she goes again i just love it oh my gosh you you know what if people wanted to buy one of your paintings or or oh my gosh she you guys she has aprons she has uh phone what are they called phone covers um she has dish towels i'm trying to i'm placing myself in your uh in your store right now oh my god there's so many things you guys oh it's just been so much fun to watch this whole process happen and thank you echo you've been so supportive and you know you're the one that gave us encouragement because of the listening to the small voice within and friends if you don't have echo's books oh, yeah. i listen to the still small voice i listen i watch um the new book that you just had out about happy happily ever after those yeah. stories yeah. were so important echo to me Good. Good. many things Good. have happened but and then you guys know that she's got two more books coming out but please oh my just God. read the books <laughs> um Honey, this show is not about me. This one's no, about you and Risa. Okay. So well, and, and I'd like to add to that echo that in, in journaling with our friend, I said, what do we do with this information? What do we do with this book? What do we do with all this art? And and my friend, our friend said, it's not about the art and it's not about the book. It's about opening up others. So there are people who are witnessing this call that yeah. i hope yeah. we're getting the encouragement that you just you listen to your intuition and go for it yes without yes. judgment and see what yes. happens i know wow. and, and i have a question for you have you noticed if your spirituality uh has changed since you started doing these mm -hmm. great question echo so um like your mom, I uh, grew up Catholic and I'm still Catholic. And I um, I trust Jesus and the Holy Spirit, of course, and God more now because I talk to them all the time. Okay. And I ask for new guides all the time based on what it is I want to achieve. Um, and I meditate more than I have before. And, you know, I'm really conscious of my words and what I think um when i see people and how i treat people okay. and i think a lot of it is uh, just realizing what happens on the other side mm -hmm. and you know, those life reviews and mm -hmm. and just karmic lessons mm -hmm. so um that has deepened my spirituality and okay. um so for sure what would you say yeah, we we've been talking about this earlier and how over this period of time um, we've gone from everything is startling, like oh, I'm getting messages from a deceased friend through my dreams. Everything's uh -huh. gone from startling to being like oh, of course, you know, of course, okay. there's messages okay. out there. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. I think there's something else um, since I've been uh, opening up more. I know in your earlier session, you know, you were talking about your ghost busting and you're talking about um, 
the feeling or the seeing. I uh, feel ghosts now or spirits, yep. and yep. I uh, know, um, or I I don't help them get across because I contact you to help them get across. But I I feel spirit, and I feel spirits that need help, and I don't see okay. them. But that opened up, uh, pre you know, and I didn't have that before. So yep. there's yes. been many now four instances where. Uh, we've helped spirits cross over. Okay. I mean, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid anymore. I used Good. to be afraid. Yes. And I'm not. Yes. 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 That is so cool. So, honey, what are you creating down there? We can't. Uh, I wonder can't. if we. Oh, here. I'll just push it. Down. Oh, oh, my. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. my. So, Risa, so, will, you, will you tell the folks about your book? Please. No. Yes, thank you. This this book is called When Paradise Speaks, and well, it's in here somewhere. And uh, it is the remarkable true story of friendship and after death communication and art that heals because Good. the soul produces that and is creating our healing, okay. healing the souls of others. Um, the the story is exactly as it unfolded i am not a writer i had no intentions in my life of writing a book okay. um, but the book got written and um and so i i feel like in a lot of ways it was um channeled that okay it was information that needed to happen and it tells the story and i think it, um really encourages the reader to to tap into their own intuition and see what's in there and see what they want to create. Yeah. 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 Wow. This it's, is beautiful. It's a, it's a journey. Thank you. Your journey was fascinating because you had Wes on last week yeah. and Wes Hamilton uh, was a big part of Reese's journey, yes. his coaching and his numerology. Oh, and oh. His meditation. okay. Well, yeah, and that's one thing for me to um, to access this and go deep with this. I had to become a quieter person because I was used to working out of my head. Yeah, you know, yeah. So I had to become a quieter person, and that was a year that I spent about nine months with Wes Hamilton doing a okay. very okay. Deep, intensive um, meditation session where I journaled, and I would meet with him every week and debrief the things that were happening. And when, okay. when you get into that space, as many of the listeners know, when you can get into that meditative state, you can yes. access so much more. Yes, yes. Well, isn't that cool? Because, again, because I introduced Wes a couple a couple weeks ago. Last week we had Pastor Tim, and I think Wes was the week before that. And, wow, this kind of brings it all full circle, doesn't it? That's really cool. Well, yeah, there's guy, there's all kinds of guides and teachers out there. And then each of us know the answer for ourselves inside what we are to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but great people to talk to and be with and, and teach yes. us new things. I know. And, yeah. You asked about um, uh, where, you know, where can they buy that at the store, et cetera. Yes. But, which, yes. Yeah. What's happened lately is people are calling and saying, and can you, just um, here's the loved one's name and here's my relation. And could you please just meditate and uh, paint something? So oh, I'm doing oh, commission oh. work. Yeah. And the other interesting thing about that is um, not only am I doing it for souls that have crossed over, but I'm doing it for souls that are still here because they need a message. And so then I interpret or they help interpret the painting the colors all have meaning, as you know, and so it often helps people get unstuck. Mm -hmm. A minute about the kind of what's coming out in this picture in the different colors. Yeah, well, this one is very simple, right? This piece, and so yeah. I already got the name. It's just called Simple Intuition. So, oh, oh, yeah, the, I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. So it's oh, very I simple compared to the other one that was just sort of chaos energy that I was feeling at first and just exuberant energy. And then of course, you know, I make messes over here on the far right. And I feel like those are just little orbs 
like oh. little feet, you know, crossing off the page and then coming back on the page. Okay. And so anytime yeah. something goes off the page, my mom always used to say, Annie, quit painting outside the lines. And, and my soul says, but I don't see any lines. Right? Oh, oh, what a sweet little, oh, what yeah. a sweet memory that is. I yeah. don't, oh, I don't see the lines. I don't see the lines. So um, you notice I signed this one. So yes, this did. one, my, yeah, my soul said, simple intuition, it's done. It, it's done. So some of them take longer and I'll, you know, adjust or something. And then when I sign it, I know it's done. Um, so Honey. After, yeah. Look at that. It's just beautiful. Gosh, just beautiful. And so is the other one. I mean, yeah. I understand because we were all, all three of us were excited about the show tonight. And so it makes sense to me that you just, have a whole bunch of energy just excited and wow yeah. This, yeah. this one's wild isn't it <laughs> that one is uncontainable that one just says uncontainable that's wow. good yes so you'll know the picture is done when she signs it yeah, yeah. okay okay good to know no. and, honey cool. you said uh you said there are scents s-c-e-n-t-s smells scents yeah. Can you, can you explain that more, honey? Yeah. So um, I use a an essential oil called Aura Soma. And a woman named Vicki White actually created these bottles. And there are like 144 of them, which I have, these bottles. And they all have different meanings. Wow. And wow. They have different colors. And when you shake them together, it's it's oil and then minerals and they're from you know the uk and okay. they all have different meanings and when i bless the paper um you know some might be archangel michael or archangel raphael um okay. Okay. so there's different messages then that i uh, put inside the paper and as i said i just go to my container and pull the ones that they tell me to pull. Okay. So okay. these were the two colors that were pulled today. Gosh, sweetie, that, honey, thank God you took those classes. That's all I can say. I know, <laughs> and I did. From, I took Echo's classes, and you know, you don't think anything's happening, but it really is happening yeah, when you just is. allow. Yeah. And um, you said this in your first class, Echo, about. Uh, allowing and that's what we needed to do mm -hmm. because yeah. we got the messages but yeah. we didn't allow yeah. Yeah. yeah I get it honey. I get it wow so she actually had a dream one night and in her dream she got the message of how to help people access their intuition and create through the five A's so maybe you could tell them a little oh. bit about that Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to hear about that for sure. Okay. So the first A echo is be willing to ask, right? We have to ask for help. Just like you ask your intuition, your guide, should I go this way? Should I go that way? Should I go to the slumber party of my best friend when I was seven? So we forget to ask. And you were talking also about, you know, you don't have to go to the cemetery to ask or to church to ask, you could just ask. I still do go to church and I go to the cemetery, but I also just ask when I'm walking or whatever. And then the second uh, piece is allow. So you have to allow the messages to come through as they are. So yeah. when a friend told us to drip ink on plastic and blow it with my breath, it's like, what? No. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't allow it, right? Right, honey. And then, right. Yeah. And then you need to accept the message as it is. Mm -hmm. Just like when you uh, averted that car accident uh, with your mm -hmm. message, why am I going that way or not going that way? So uh, we accepted the message. Okay, I'll try to drip ink on plastic. And, but what ended up happening is, as you said, I got a message on my cell phone. So we know that we get after death communication through technology. And yeah. because we're yeah. technologists, that's how they talk to us. Yes. And then the next yes. one is be grateful. And you see that even though this might look like a mess, 
I'm grateful it came through and I'm grateful to them to have me blow it through. And I never judge because it's not my work. Right, it's really. a, you know, a collection. Yeah. I'm grateful that we have this gift and that you're inviting us here and that Risa shares it with me. And then um, act. And this yeah. is my frustration. Oh, People do not act. Mm -hmm. You're right, so, honey. You're right. Yeah. Well, and even even to um, ask for some guidance, like I, I really need direction, and then you get these messages, but you don't do anything with it because you think, well, that can't be the message. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. like you just okay. miss the message and you don't allow it in. And That's so, right. again, it was three months from when she got the message until she started painting. Yes. It's like, I don't know what to do with this. Yes. Yeah. So how you you act all the time, Echo. You're a master teacher. You have three new classes. You got two new books. You got your center. I just cannot believe what you're doing. And thank you, thank you, because you are making it happen. So, well, honey, you know, what? as as you two know, it's all intuition. I mean, everything that I do is intuitively guided and. And those five suggestions are really, really a lot deeper and more significant than people might think. You know, people might go, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then move on. But honey, I want you to go back and say those five things again, because we don't ask. A lot of people don't feel worthy of asking. You know, oh, people say to me all the time, oh, I don't want to bother God. He's got more things going on. Okay. Um, and then we get an answer, but we don't really acknowledge it. Uh, wait, what? You want me to blow on a straw? Are, are you crazy? Okay, so then we set it aside. Um, and then to act, to really act on the guidance that we're getting. Now that takes faith, blind faith in a lot of situations. And yet, you know, I have never, and I'm sure you two have found this to be true. You have never been guided to do something that was wrong or bad or stupid or didn't make any sense. Now, a lot of times when we get the guidance, it doesn't make sense to our logical mind. But then, you know, they find ways that keep at us, that keep trying to bring the message to us. Finally, we go, okay, uncle, I give up. What? And we, well, hopefully we move forward and act on it, which is so important. I mean, I can sit here and think of, I don't think anybody has said to me, oh my gosh, my intuition told me to do this. And I got in a really bad car accident and I almost died. It, no, nobody's ever said something like that to me before. Um, Intuition is like the coolest thing on this planet. And if I do anything with this TV show, I want to just keep pounding it in people's heads every Tuesday night that you can trust. So honey, would you go through those five things again, please? You go ahead, Rita. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the first one is ask. And just, just thinking back to when our friend was in hospice, then and ann was saying come back to us and tell us what it's like on the other side or yes. we might yes. ask for our deceased my father is deceased and i might ask him for help and Anne, whose father recently passed she's always asking him for help and guidance okay so, um, we all, it always starts with the ask or nothing's going to happen and then after the ask is to allow it because the messages sometimes are so crazy it's like that's not that's not going to happen that's i'm not supposed to do that right yeah. so to allow it yeah. and accept it verbatim yeah. so she gets the direction plastic with a straw peacock colors that's the directions follow the directions that's a strong intuition and then to acknowledge and to be aware that there's more and the more we see the more is there for us to acknowledge yes. it, to be yes. grateful, yes. and then yes. make sure that we're acting on it, and it just will lead forward. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I bet you people out there are thinking, okay, so what has your friend told you about the other side? 
Oh my goodness. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. So one of, one of the, uh, my favorite of all things that she's talked about is, yep. oh yeah, I keep going off the page here. <laughs> yeah, get yes. in the page here. I, I asked her one night, I because she'd wake me up in the middle of the night and I'd be journaling with her. And um, I, I asked her, you know, what, what do you do all day? Like, what's going on over there? And one of the things she said is, she said, my favorite thing to do is to help somebody that's in distress. But the thing is, people have free will. So if somebody is lost in the mountains and they're calling out for help, she says, sometimes I will go alone or I can go with others. There'll be a group of us and we can put signposts along the way, but we cannot make a person go. They have free will. They can go where they want. And I love that because that goes right back to that. You know, if you're getting signs out there, follow the signs. Yeah. And put in your yeah. mouth for a reason. So, honey, she so means, she means, so she means people means. here on earth. What is that horrible sound? Are you can hear? Can you hear all that? Oh, good. I'm so glad. Okay. Um. So you mean somebody here on earth, if they're stuck in the mountains, she and some fellow friends can come here and help. Yeah. yeah well, of course, the souls oh. and the angels and and and. I mean, that isn't that what we pray for? We pray for guidance. We pray for we people to be with us. And then, yeah. but then we have to make the moves ourselves. So she, you know, she says, well, we might put some twigs on the path so they go that way instead of that way. Yeah. One, one thing, Echo, I thought, um, so I said to dad, after he died in February, I communicated with them and I said, dad, could you please come and help? You know, I need some help with mom and all this stuff. And he said, Annie, I'm just getting my sea legs. Okay. So I thought to myself, oh, okay, oh. okay, that's a, that's a sign sea legs. So I was in Kauai uh, with my niece not too long ago. And I said, dad, I need some help here. And I see the sign sea legs printed on the bridge. Oh, and then Echo, I was listening to your first session. What did you say? Hey friends, we had a little technical difficulty. We're just getting our sea legs. And so then I knew, ah, dad, you're gonna be with us tonight. So thank you very much. So it's really oh, reassuring oh. to ask oh as you always talk, ask for a sign. And I'm specific about the signs that yeah, I have. And demanding. Before. She's demanding. I'm pretty demanding, yeah. Mm -hmm. I need it now. And yeah. um oh, yeah. but yeah. always good or whatever helpful. And yes. Um, yes. mostly I get them, would you say? Yeah. One one thing that was interesting, you walked the Camino Trail, mm -hmm. and that was a part of your book, and you were feeling really, really low one day. And remember yeah. what happened? Yes. What happened? So this is just a little story, the Camino yeah. Trail. Tell us. I Tell us. Know that trail crossed northern Spain. It actually comes from many directions. But I was alone on the on the trail, and I was really, really sad about our friend who had passed. And then I heard about another friend that was passing. And uh, and so <clears throat> I was walking all alone, feeling really sad. And there was a little Spanish guy behind a building and he was calling out to me, Bella, Bella. So he, um, so I just waved to him and then he goes, no, no, come here. And then he handed me three walnuts in my hand. And I didn't speak a word of Spanish. He didn't speak any English. But somehow he was giving me a message for me to take them to Santiago, which is the end of the trail. So I, I wrap them in my hand and I start walking down the trail again. And all of a sudden I just burst into tears. You know, all the emotion of your friends yep. passing. And yep. I'm holding yep. these walnuts. And then I see that I have to walk this way down the trail. And there's a man up in a tree flipping walnuts. So I think, uh-oh. He's heard me crying. Now I gotta shut up and I'm gonna walk by him and I'm just gonna look down and walk by him. So of course, somebody uh, on the other side made sure to drop a walnut from the tree right in front of me. So I had no choice but to pick it up and hand it to him and look in his eyes. And he blew me a kiss. So there, it, it makes me think there's just angels and guides all around us and they want to help us and we also have to go through grief and you know yep. sad times yeah that's right, that's that's right. right. wow 
hasn't so, this so. been something for you too? Wow. This Will you thing talk a little bit about the, the colors on the other side? You had mentioned that at one point. Okay. Now, Annie, did I have a, honey, was I, was it in a dream or was I meditating and saw the vision? I can't remember. Can you remember? Yeah. Well, two things. I was painting the first time we painted, you came over and it was in a grocery store deli department. So, yep. so friends, yep. I'm just telling you, I act, we show up, we say yes. So Echo comes over and she says, these are the colors of heaven. And then you said you had a vision immediately that we were soul sisters from the other side and that the souls are lining up to come through. Yeah. Yeah. So you've seen these colors before on the other side. Oh, honey, you, you know, I can't stress enough the colors uh, because, yes, I do remember it. Honey, I think it was in a dream that I, that I saw. Um, I saw a picture of Annie and I walking down the street in heaven before we were born. And we were talking about the colors of heaven and how the colors here on earth are kind of muted. Even though us humans, we think, oh, wow, look at that red leaf or that uh, yellow leaf. But phew, these colors here on earth, after I had this uh, out-of-body experience to the other side, oh my gosh, the colors over there are just stunning. And when I started seeing Annie's paintings, the ink is the same color as the colors in heaven. Like tonight, I mean, oh, you guys, I, I can't even explain how amazing the colors are on the other side. It's just everything is so, and it sounds funny to say this, but everything is so alive over there. And and down here is where everything's kind of dull, okay? And uh, that's one of the reasons I think why I love these paintings so much because they remind me of home, our soul, all of our souls. You know, I watch people look at Annie doing her work and they're just mesmerized. And I think they're all sensing, oh, wait a minute, I've seen these colors before. They don't know, they can't remember where, why. Why do I feel so connected to this painting or to that color? But um, I just loved that. And, um, oh, I have to tell you guys a cool story. So one time I had a dream that Annie, Annie made a painting uh, for a child and it was a giraffe, right? And I thought, oh, I wonder what that means. I wonder what that means. Hmm. And so I sent her an email probably and said, Annie, I think you're supposed to do animals. And she's like, animals? I don't do animals. I said, okay. Okay, so about two years later, we were someplace and a little child asked her to draw. Honey, I don't remember if he asked you to make a giraffe or if you just made the giraffe, but it was exactly the picture that I saw, all this grass and then this giraffe just sticking its long neck out of the, it. I can't even tell you. I picked, I picked up your dream. I was in the Black Hills of South Dakota when I painted a giraffe. I I I don't paint animals. So somebody asked me to paint a mermaid. I don't paint a mermaid. But I do believe that I picked up your your um, dream yeah. in painting that. It was just out of character. So no one asked me to paint it. Um, that same kind of concept, Echo, Risa and I recently we're facilitators at the Shift Network, and we have a class out on the Shift Network on creativity for healing and transformation. And when I was painting, the facilitator said to me, oh my gosh, that kind of painting looks like my mother's painting, the way she would paint. And I said, well, the I said, I keep getting in utero, and I'm not a mom, and I don't know that word, and in utero. And, um, the woman, Lisa, says, my mother and I didn't have a good relationship. And Lisa said something like, I think the mother is blowing through. The mother blew through the painting for Lisa. And because of that, they reconnected. And the mother allowed this woman then to write a book that had been blocked for three years. So that's the kind of thing we're hearing when we're with people and they see the painting. And the other day we were at your your other center, 
And yeah. I had a painting called Always With You, and it was an original. And one of your guests came up and said, what is the name of that painting? And I said, Always With You. She turned around her pendant and it said, Always With You. She said, this is the paint, the one that my children have given to me and I've given to them. I have to buy that painting. So I oh. give two names for a painting typically, sort of a regular name like Yellow Roses, and then I'll get a deep meaning so yeah. that people can see it on both levels. Okay. Oh, my God. You guys, look at what's happened to your life, but in such yeah. a positive way. Oh my God. Okay. So, honey. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. The shift thing. How can people, can people take that? They can echo. If, um, if they happen to be on LinkedIn, they can connect with me on LinkedIn. And the network link is right in my featured section. Okay. So, um, otherwise, they can email me or go to the loveitude.com, which is on our name underneath, and they okay. can see the work and Risa's book as well. Yes. And, yes. Um, and they can replay this as well because I'm going to pop it on my featured section on my LinkedIn profile, all of your um, Good. old brave. And yes. then we're going to put it on LinkedIn too. Good, yeah. honey. Okay. Good. Oh, this is so good. I'm Thank glad you. people can take a. Uh, a class with you two, that just makes me feel so happy. Thank oh you, Echo. Thank uh, you. We have people from all over the world taking that course, and they were all trying to figure out, without getting their heads in the way, how to create, yeah. what to okay. create, and they came up with amazing things. Just like you told them at the beginning of the five minutes. Echo, I just want to show you this, and I'm not sure if you've seen this or not, but no, so, I haven't. No. Okay. It's beautiful. So, um, the day George Floyd died or was murdered, um, yes. it's only 25 minutes from my house. And I was propelled to paint. Yeah. And so if you can see, there's George's face in here. There's a oh. fist and there's a teardrop. And what ended up happening is I actually painted this and then put it on the floor to dry. But I had gold in my hand. And I got six strips of ink that showed his face and his fist and his tear. So this oh. is now in the attorney's office that is representing his family. Oh so my God. It's um, yeah, so that's fascinating. And then the day oh. That, oh, God. Um, oh my God. Oh my God. Here comes another one that's the day that the Twin Cities, uh, we're from Minneapolis, St. Paul, oh, friends. Oh, day that Twin Cities was burning. Oh. I never this. This is called smoldering. And oh, if you look at it, Risa, you can tell them about the Draco. Oh, as Dracula. soon as I saw this picture, I got yeah. goosebumps because I had been to Dachau years ago a concentration camp and this is what it looks like as you're walking towards it and there's you know there's um oh my God. Viewers come. and then um there's actually if you will um it looks like the army men but they're called um what are they called not army men soldiers no they're called Arms. on the anyway if you look here and then there's green which is love which is coming out of all of this okay so, yes Wow, honey. It's very deep that I sometimes, uh, anyway, the meanings are very deep. Amazing, amazing. Um, I just want to say that cute little picture behind you, uh, straight behind you, honey, with the sail boats. I have mm -hmm. a, one, what are they called? Uh, it's like, it's not a doily, it's a what? Uh, a thing that you put on a table. I can't yeah. think of what. It's a placemat. Placemat. Thank you. Right behind me is Echo's oh, yeah. land. So yeah. if you yeah. would come to her, her center, she has lamps, and that's the first one she made for me, and I'll never give it away. It's yeah. always with me when I'm painting, and it's my mugs. So oh, thank you. Gosh, oh, look at that. Oh, I just, God, haven't we had fun? You guys, the show is almost over. 
So, holy smokes. Okay, so you know how to get a hold of these people. You want to get a copy of Reese's book uh, to read about the whole journey. It's really, really a cool book. And uh, Annie's just going to keep on uh, painting and uh, bringing all of this to the world. Oh my God, honey, and your paintings are all over in Europe. I mean, you are everywhere, aren't you? Yes. Well, um, our friend said that the paintings would fly ahead and they yes. surely have. Yes, mm -hmm. they yeah. have. Yes. And the book, Risa, <laughs> is it good? Doing good? Yeah. It's good. flying. Yeah. Good. And I'm so you just release this into the world because that's what our, our guidance has been to us. Release it in the world as a tool to lighten up others or brighten up their creativity and healing. Excellent. Excellent. All right, you two. It is time to say good night. God, I can't thank you enough for being on the show tonight. What an uplifting show this is. So God bless you both. God bless you both. And uh, I'll see you next month. Uh, no, yeah. No. Anyway, I'll see you in November at the Oropalooza. Okay. Okay. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thank you Bye so. for now, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining. Bye. 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 Okay. Oh my goodness. Wow. Can you believe the hour is almost up? Um, something a lot of you have asked me if I would give out the name of uh, the where you can get clearing products. Um, remember now, it is holisticarts.net. It's right there on the screen. That's where you can get mirror necklaces. You can get, oh gosh, all kinds of the clearing products that I've showed you in the past. Uh, good things to clear your home of any kind of negativity or fear, anger. Um, she's got it all. You can go to holistic holisticarts.net and you can look at all of her products and you can order everything online, which is really nice. Oh my goodness. Next week, we're going to have a pretty fun show. Oh my gosh. Okay. So tomorrow I'm going to go do a ghost busting at a haunted theater and we're going to record it so that I can show you next week how it was. And then my brother and my sister are going to come on. They're going to be the guests on the show. We're going to talk about what it was like growing up in a haunted house, what it's like to even go and work with ghosts, deal with ghosts. Uh, we're going to talk about all of it next Tuesday night, which happens to be Halloween. So gosh, what else can I tell you before I have to say good night? Okay. Don't forget to listen to your inner voice. Okay. It's that still small voice inside, usually in your heart area or in your gut. Okay. Just watch how you talk. Men will say, well, my gut says we should do this. Women say, I don't know. I just know we should do it this way. So when you refer to your gut or you refer to knowing, that is your intuition. Okay. All right, everybody. I'm going to say good night. It's time to say good night and have a good week. Be good. Be healthy. I love you all. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Okay. All right. Good night. You've been watching Enough is Enough with host Echo Bodine. It's time to bring negative beliefs out of the darkness and into the light where they belong. Come and join Echo each week, Tuesdays, 9 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network for a positive look at God's gifts.